If you've been brewing for a while like I have, you pick up a lot of little tips and tricks and things from all over the place. In this video, I want to share with you six simple things that I have added over my years of brewing that help me make my process really simple and easier and they don't cost a lot of money. How's it going? My name's Brian. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see product reviews and tip videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is towels. Now, as brewers, we're pretty much janitors and yeast stewards. <laughs> so when you think about those two processes, one of them is just kind of monitoring temperature of yeast and making sure that the yeast is healthy and all that stuff. And then the other part is cleaning. And that's where these rags really come into play. And I actually purchased these. I started purchasing these a while back. I found them at Walmart for, I think it was like eight or $10 for like 10 or 15 of them. And I like the white ones because of the fact that when you use them with PBW or any other cleaners or anything like that, they don't turn, they, the dye doesn't leach out of them. So I definitely recommend white for the towels if you're going to use them. Now I'll put a link down below, but I bought 50 of these off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. They're awesome towels. I use them for just about everything. I use them to, to clean fermenters. I use them to dry out stuff. That's one of the things that, you know, when you clean your equipment, you definitely want to make sure it's dry so it doesn't mold or mildew or anything like that. One of the other tips that I can give you, and I've done this a couple times on live streams and I didn't really call attention to it that much, but if you take a towel and wipe the inside of your kettle, like the trub and all that stuff that comes up with the boil and just stay ahead of it while you're brewing, while it's boiling, you're actually going to have a lot less cleanup at the end of the day. One thing I will tell you with the towels, if you do use them, make sure you get a dye and fragrance free detergent. You want to make sure that you keep any kind of dyes or any kind of perfumes or anything like that out of your brewing process. Just probably won't end up with a good uh, result if you don't. So the next tip is gloves. Now, I know I've talked about gloves in a couple other videos before about how important they are to protect your skin. But there's also, you know, you want to protect your skin from heat. So like, let's say if you do a brew in a bag method and you want to squeeze the bag, I've got a pair of gloves that are really heat resistant for that. I'll leave a link for those down below. And to protect your hands, they work really, really well. Cleaning out the mash ton and stuff like that, once you're done with your mash, using long gloves is really, really nice. It Keep, keeps your hands from getting all dirty and, and messed up and everything as far as, you know, getting grain all over them and stuff. And they're easy to rinse off the gloves when you're done. The other thing is I use nitro gloves in the brew house. And that's mainly just little odds and end things that I do. And one of the, one of the biggest tips for that is if you have like an aeration stone or a carbonation stone or, you know, oxygenation stone for your brewing, your brewing process, you definitely want to handle those with a glove on because the oils from your skin can clog up those items and cause you issues down the road. Tip number three, spray bottle. Now you can use a spray bottle in a couple different ways. One of the things you can do is actually use a spray bottle with just like distilled water in it or something like that to prevent boil overs. And I don't do it as much anymore with electric brewing because I can turn off the element. But if you're on a propane or other system like that where you can't reduce the heat rapidly like you can with an electric system, a spray bottle with distilled water sprayed over top of the, the Krausen and everything as it's starting to do a hot break, it'll actually force all that stuff to kind of collapse and fall back down into the kettle. So you can definitely use it for that. As far as the spray bottle goes, I like to use it with a mix of star sand and water and, you know, spray down fermentation vessels. I like to, you know, if I need to sanitize a hose that I'm going to use for transfer and I didn't have a chance to run hot water through it or something like that. Anything that you need to sanitize, you can generally use a spray bottle with and have great success and use a lot less product. Now, I know you guys love these kind of videos. If you're enjoying this video so far, leave me a like down below. Also comment, let me know what your favorite tip was as you watch the video. Certainly do appreciate it. Tip number four is a pitcher. And this is one of those things, you know, I bought the pitcher that I have. I bought it probably, I'm going to say at least like eight or nine years ago, whenever I started doing all grain brewing. And I have actually had that pitcher ever since then. It's a Rubbermaid. I looked up plastic pitchers on Amazon and lo and behold, the version that I have is still for sale. I'll put a link down below. It's only like 10 or 12 bucks. On Amazon, you might find it in the store for a little cheaper, but I use it for everything. Catching liquid as it's coming out of, you know, when you disconnect hoses, when you're doing recirculation like a Vorloff or if you're doing sparging or anything like that. One of the things I will tell you with a gallon pitcher, it's a good idea to calibrate it so you know exactly, like let's say if you want to measure 
volumes in a new fermenter or if you want to do sparging and you want to have an exact amount a lot of times when I do sparging, I'll heat up like if I'm going to do a two gallon sparge, I'll heat up two and a half gallons of water so they don't have to worry about like tipping or pouring out the heating vessel for the sparge water. And I'll fill it up to the level that I know is a gallon based on calibrating it. And water is 8.34 pounds per gallon at room temperature. My scale goes to 8.35, but it's close enough for me. Weigh your water out in your pitcher, mark it on there so you have a good calibration and you're good to go. Now, a money-saving tip as far as making star sand solution, it only takes six milliliters of star sand to make a gallon of star sand solution. So I generally don't ever make more than a gallon of star sand. I'll, I'll fill up the pitcher, use a spray bottle like I talked about just a second ago, fill up the spray bottle, and then, like I said, you know, sanitize everything. You can drop your any of your valves or anything like that in the pitcher while you're doing your brew day. And then by the end of it, you're ready to go. And basically you're having really no waste at all. And you know, as cheap as it is to be able to do a gallon of star sand solution, I just do a mix up new mix every day. And then the spray bottle that I fill, it generally lasts all the way until the next brew day. And I use it for, you know, sanitizing fermentation, fermenter connections and all that stuff when I'm doing transfers and everything. And for me, it stays plenty good. I've never had any issues at all. If you want to get crazy, you can do pH test strips and all that stuff. But if you just mix up a new batch every month at least, you're definitely going to have no problems at all. The next thing that I have of just a bunch of is like clips and clamps. I use the binder clips to hold brew in a bag bags in place. They work really great for that. I've got a bunch of other plastic clips, clamps, all that kind of stuff to be able to hold holes to hold hoses whenever you're, you know, you got a hose that's hanging up on the side of your vessel like the, with the all-in-one systems if you've got the recirculation hose hanging there. It's great to be able to just clamp it there and not have to worry about it falling down and your wart going all over the floor. Um, the other thing that you can do, they make magnetic ones. You can actually, you know, attach your, if you're one of those kind of people that likes, has a brew, like to have a brew sheet out while you're brewing during the day, you can get a magnetic one, clamp the brew sheet to it, stick it on your, your control panel or someplace that's metal or whatever. Or, you know, if you want a suction cup one, you can stick it to the wall. Definitely, definitely recommend clips and clamps of all different kinds. And, you know, you can go crazy with that kind of stuff and, and just, you know, go go to like Harbor Freight or any place that's uh, fairly cheap and, and get a bunch of them and definitely outfit your brewery with that. All right, last but not least is containers. And in a previous video I did on storing grain, I went to the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store and bought a bunch of containers to store my adjunct malts and all that stuff in. Well, we're back to the Dollar Tree again for this one. Uh, they have a bunch of different containers. They're usually a dollar each for maybe two or three of them sometimes. I use them for all kinds of stuff, catching liquid, whatever it's coming out of, you know, when I unhook a, a hose or just all different kinds of uses for them in the process of brewing. And, you know, if you use those and you keep the wart from getting on the floor or, or the counter or whatever, less cleanup at the end of the day. And I use them to cool down wart samples. Uh, they they make glass. I found like four, I think a four pack of glass dishes, like little uh, mise en place or prep dishes for cooking. And they work perfectly. I mean, I use them to weigh out all of my brewing salts. With brewing salts, you know, how many times have you raised your hand if you've uh, ever, you know, dumped in some gypsum and then go to dump in some calcium chloride in the same container and you go way over the mark and then you got to try to figure out how to get it all out of there. Just go get these. They're a dollar for four of them. Put all of your brewing salts in separate vessels. You can even put your lactic acid in there if you need to in their glass. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything to, to dip them in the in the mash water while you're heating it up to, to get your salts in the in your brew day. I also use those storage containers for all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'll store, you know, extra, extra you know, uh, tri-clamp valves, all kinds of stuff. I've got all my airlocks in one. I, you know, they're a little more expensive. I bought them from Ikea. But I have a, you know, a, a ton of different containers that I keep everything in. It's nice to keep stuff organized. You can go and look in your brew house and go, okay, well, you know, here's my airlocks. Here's my stuff for kegging, all that kind of stuff. Organization is really great because then you're not fumbling around looking for something on a brew day or, you know, when you're kegging or whatever like that. So leave me a comment down below if you have any other tips for things that are just simple that you do that, you know, you would want to share with the rest of us or something that I missed based on, you know, what I shared with you guys here. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.